Welcome to Market Movers. I'm Dave Hightower, joined by Dan Bossi. Dan, we're going to talk about the future, uh, migration of global trading interest in black sea grains. Well, it really is important, David. And as we think back over the last 25 years, Russia in that Black Sea area used to be one of the world's largest importing areas. Now they've become a significant exporter. And so Black Sea wheat and corn have become one of the other benchmarks in terms of importance in terms of world grain. And the world's big. We need more production all the time. We need a record Black Sea crop almost every year now just to meet expanding world demand. So we're excited for the opportunity. And I think that this region is just someone that's going to continue to keep growing. Well, let's set the table a little bit. The wheat harvest in the Black Sea region begins in May and it runs through September in some areas, so we have that right ahead of us. And so what are the factors this year impacting prices? I think we need to think a lot, just like here in the Midwest, it's weather. Uh, the Russians have planted a record amount of winter wheat last year. Uh, the Ukrainians are looking at expanding their corn acreage this year. So it's weather that combines with seedings to really decide what production is. But the production risks are about twice the amount we have here in the Midwest, which likely gives us more volatility in that contract as we think the future uh, opportunities. And in the corn market, we're not suggesting that the U.S. is going to lose its prominence, but the export capacity out of some of those countries for corn is quite significant. Well, in fact, if we think about the ABU countries, we talk about you know uh, Ukraine, Argentina, Brazil, they are going to take up about 67% of world corn trade this year. So the importance of these pre-principal countries is growing with time. And COFCO indicated recently that they may double their overall Black Sea purchases. So it, it is uh, becoming an issue. It is. And, and I think it's right that we start talking and focusing on this part of the world and educating everybody of the opportunity. And also, some of those purchases are booked well ahead, and that's assuming that we're going to get the crop. Exactly. So could be some volatility in there. So black sea corn has shown more upside sensitivity than U.S. corn over the last 14 months. So it shows it is becoming a focal point of the global trade. It is. And, and the dynamics of trade in Ukraine because of weather, because of transportation and logistics, just makes it more volatile as we think forward. And so I think if you're in the speculative community, you're going to like looking at the black sea as a potential trading environment. So, Dan, before we dive into our trade discussions, I'd like to point out that these trades are examples and not recommendations or advice. So we're coming into the harvest. What's your trade example? As a trade example, I'm looking at buying a July Black Sea Wheat Platts Futures at $192.50 a ton. We're going to risk $4 a ton in that trade with an upside target of $210 per ton. Great. So looking into that uh, harvest activity. So Dan, as an example, I'm looking to buy November Black Sea Corn Platts Futures at $169.75 a ton. And I want to use an objective of $184.50 a ton. And I want to risk $5 per ton from entry. So like U.S. corn, I think we've compounded a lot of negatives already into prices. I agree, David. I think the value in the market is there already. So I don't think we have a lot of downside risk. We'll see where Mother Nature takes us. Excellent. So Dan, on Market Movers, we like to educate new folks just tuning in. And so this week, education topic is going to be what's the difference between black sea corn and wheat compared to U.S. corn and Chicago wheat? Well, the big difference, Dave, is the contracts. And we'll start out talking about that. In Chicago, we trade bushels. In the Black Sea, we trade tons. Now, in each metric ton, there's 36.73 bushels of wheat, 39.2 um, uh, bushels of corn. That kind of delineates where, we're, where we should go in that contract. But even beyond that, there's a little bit of difference in terms of quality. The wheat uh, contract in the Black Sea is more like a Kansas City wheat. Corn is relatively comparable. And, you know, it's not a zero-sum game. There's enough demand in the world. We need that supply. We really do. And I think as we think back, as this uh, area of the world grows in terms of opportunity, I, I really think that the Chinese and lots of others will be looking at this part of the world for their supplies going forward. Thanks, Dan, for your insight. We'll keep a close eye on the market. Thanks for joining us on Market Movers. I'm Dave Hightower. Trade well and trade smart.